Shalom and welcome back to Che Languages. A few weeks ago, you may have seen my video on three forgotten Semitic languages, in which I featured this map. This is slightly misleading as the Semitic languages are now widespread across North Africa and the Middle East. It rather shows a representation of the historical locations of Semitic languages. However, before we go into this in more detail, I'd like to make you aware, if you were not already, that I featured in Samarano's video about the revival of Hebrew. Be sure to check it out after this video, but for now, let's take a look at the Semitic languages. So if we take another look at this map, you can see that we have three main sub-branches, and we'll go into more detail very soon. But first, let's talk about what makes a Semitic language Semitic. The name itself comes from Hebrew, one of the living Semitic languages today, and the only Semitic language that I myself can speak. The name comes from Shem, which not only means name in Hebrew, but was also the name of one of Noah's three sons in the Bible, Shem, Cham, and Japhet, if these names are familiar to you. When the Hebrew Bible was translated into ancient Greek, this name became Sem, as Greek did not have nor still has today the sh phoneme. Semitic languages tend to share a similar grammar structure, but the word order can be a bit messy. Modern Standard Arabic follows a VSO word order, for example, that is verb, subject, object, and so do classical Hebrew. However, modern Hebrew is now SVO, and this change is not actually as recent as the revival of Hebrew. Again, you can learn more about that in Sam's video. And Akkadian, another Semitic language, used SOV word order. Proto-Semitic had three cases, nominative, accusative, and genitive, However, almost all Semitic languages ended up losing them. Most dialects of Arabic still contain them, but this does explain why the word order is inconsistent. Proto-Semitic also had a dual case, similar to Ancient Greek. This is still preserved in Hebrew, albeit for some very niche subjects, such as body parts and time, such as this example here, meaning year and two years, shana and shnatayim, respectively. Anything more than two years would just be shanim. The most well-known feature that all Semitic languages share still today, however, is the root system, and this is actually how we identify Semitic languages in the first place. Basically, every verb, and by extension nouns derived from verbs, has a root of usually three consonants, but also two for simple verbs and four for some special verbs. Let's take the KTB root, or Shoresh Kaf Tafbet in Hebrew. This is also a verb root shared in Phoenician, Arabic, and Aramaic. The root is associated with everything related to writing. And here's a list of just some of the words in Hebrew derived from this root. Yes, there are more. You can do this with virtually any root, and the advantage of this is that the vowel placement is usually consistent, meaning that you could come across a word you didn't know, but you can identify the root and see the placement, you can easily guess the meaning. For example, I was reading something the other day and I came across the word Bechira. I'd never seen the word before, but I could identify it was from the Betchetresh root, which has everything to do uh, with choosing, and given that it was in noun form, I simply guessed the meaning was choice. I checked later, and that was correct on my part, so it makes learning new vocabulary and guessing meanings very easy and convenient. Now let's look at the family itself. The Semitic languages aren't family actually, it's a branch of the wider Afroasiatic language family, just like the Slavic languages are to the Indo-European language family. There are three main divisions, Central, Southern, and Eastern, however Eastern is sadly extinct today. Southern has the most number of languages, but ultimately Central has the most number of speakers, with both Hebrew and Arabic being Central Semitic. First, let's look at the Eastern subbranch. Two languages have been identified as Eastern Semitic, Akkadian, once the most spoken language across the largest empire in the world, now extinct, and Eblayat, also known as Paleo-Syrian. There is debatably a third language known as Kishite, but not much evidence has been uncovered yet to determine whether it was fully its own thing. Similarly, not a whole lot is known about Eblayat, until fairly recently in linguistics it was just considered a dialect of Akkadian until a few texts which contain it suggested some features otherwise. Some linguists also argue that it is potentially its own sub-branch, North Semitic, but similar to Kishite, there isn't much evidence in favour of it. This also reminds me of the theory that Novgorod was its own North Slavic language, which is still an argument, but off topic for today's video. Eblayat was written in cuneiform, just like Akkadian, and talking of Akkadian, we know a lot more about it. First of all, it was called Akkadu, and was the first Semitic language to ever be written, though the cuneiform is not a Semitic script. Akkadian was also known to preserve the proto-Semitic case system I mentioned earlier, and many words from Akkadian still exist in Hebrew today because of its massive influence, such as Adichal, Ika, and Tanigol, to name a few. By the way, there is an Akkadian language revival movement, which I will link below because, to be honest, that's the most awesome thing I've heard this year. But for now, we move on to our next sub-branch.
Central Semitic can be divided three ways, Arabic, Canaanite, and Aramaic. It's worth mentioning that the Ugaritic and Amorite languages have not been classified any further and are just Central Semitic, as well as being extinct. Canaanite languages, also called Northwest Semitic, include Hebrew, Phoenician, Ammonite, Moabite, and Edomite, Hebrew being the only surviving one today. We must remember though that it is the Phoenicians who gave us the alphabet and the language once spread across the Mediterranean. Aramaic, contrary to popular belief, still exists and is actually a collection of several languages, mostly not mutually intelligible. Turoyo and Suret are the most well-known Aramaic languages today, but Ma'alula, Hulaula, several Judeo varieties, as well as Assyrian Neo-Aramaic and Chaldeo Neo-Aramaic all exist. Aramaic is also written in several scripts historically speaking. The Imperial Aramaic script is where Hebrew got inspiration for its modern script, and Ma'alula Aramaic still uses a derived version of this script as shown here. However, the most popular script is Syriac. The Arabic script is also ultimately derived from Syriac through Nabataean first. Talking of Arabic, it's not really one language at all, as different so-called dialects are completely unintelligible. However, pan-Arab nationalists like to dispute this for political reasons, more or less. But if we consider it as one language, it has just over 362 million overall speakers, making it among the most spoken languages in the world. To finish the section, here is a map of all the different Arabic languages, or dialects if you prefer. Finally, as we talked about before, the Maltese language is derived from the Maghrebi Arabic language. That's the entire Central Semitic subbranch, however, so let's move on to our less subbranch. As for South Semitic, we can divide it by two main ways Eastern and Western. Western is the most spoken sub subbranch and can be divided two more ways Ethiopian and Old South. Old South Arabian Semitic languages are now all extinct, but were once spoken in the southwest of the Arabian Peninsula in present-day Yemen, or what's left of it anyway. These languages included the following, and though it's widely understudied and debated amongst linguists, it's possible that two living languages, Rahizi and Faifi, are descended from Old South Arabian, though the lines get blurry as officially they are Central Semitic. The modern South Arabian languages fall into the Eastern sub-sub-branch, these languages being Sokotri, which we talked about before, Mehri, Harsusi, Batari, Shehri, and Haboyot. These languages are really interesting and I definitely like to go into more detail in my next Forgotten Semitic Languages video. Finally, the Ethiopian languages are furthermore split in twain between a north-south division. Here is a close-up of the map once again to help visualise. Here are just some of the languages listed below and it's important to mention that some of these languages are very widely spoken, with millions of speakers in Ethiopia and Eritrea. Ethiopian languages are usually known for typically being written in the Ge'ez script, Ge'ez being a now dead North Ethiopian language that holds a similar status to Latin in Ethiopian society, being the traditional language of the Old Ethiopian Empire. Thus Old South Arabian languages are usually unwritten, but texts survive from the ancient Jewish kingdom of Himyar, that's a crazy crossover story for another time, written in this script. Another script called the Sabaean script is also attested on monuments like this and has been decoded. The modern South Arabian languages are written in a modified form of the Arabic script, unsurprisingly given where they are spoken. And that's it for the South Semitic subbranch, however, and we're going to conclude this video now. So, that's an overview of the Semitic languages for you all. It's not a complete list of all of them because the classifications can get blurry, like I said, with Arabic, but it is all of the sub 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 branches of the Semitic branch and should give you a good overview of how it all fits together. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and like the video. And please do feel free to talk to me about Semitic languages in the comments with any questions or reflections you have. Once again, go and watch the video with Samarano, and I thank you for watching. See you next time. Yalla.